All righty. Well, thanks everyone uh, for joining this month's webinar on troubleshooting idea statica models. Dave Eckrode is in Atlanta this week for an SCA event. So uh, I'm filling in his shoes today uh, to introduce our topic. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm Jason McNeil. I'm the regional engineer for the Western US. And with me today also is Andrea Costello. She's one of our product engineers and will be teaching us about the troubleshooting. So next slide. And with that, we'll get into the agenda. So today, obviously, we're talking about troubleshooting models. Um, so what do you do when your analysis doesn't run? You get a meshing error, singularity warnings, all those things that leave you scratching your head with what to do next. So from time to time, on our end, we receive models like this. And um, I have to start troubleshooting these from our end. So today, we're, we're kind of giving the inside scoop on you know, what do we do? How do we approach these models when um, when we receive them and kind of the mental checklist that we go through. Um, so that's what we're going to hit on today. So with that, Andrea, I'll hand it over to you. Um, so it's all, all yours. All right. Thank you. Okay. So let's let's start with this presentation. Um, all right. There you go. Um, all right, so um, as mentioned, as Jason mentioned, after some years of solving tech support cases, we prepared this checklist that you can follow in case you get an error, singularity, the analysis is not running, um, it doesn't finish successfully, or you get odd results. So basically, this webinar contains an idea static troubleshooting guide, right? Uh, and once um, so I'll be showing you like 10, 10 points in my, in my checklist and explain all of them. So once we get the model with the issue, we always click on the calculate button. And the first point to review is the status of the analysis. And um, also we ask for the version of the software that uh, the user is using, right? So after clicking on the calculate button, you can always see the status of the analysis in the top left, left side of the modeling window. From there, you get the first like insight of what is going on in the model, like the utilization ratios, analysis errors, singularities, percentage of the applied forces, and so on. So I'll explain all of them during uh, this webinar using all my checklist points. But the important thing of this slide that is that you always can see what is happening here in this area, right? Um, it is important that you read everything that it's there because that can um, give you an idea of what is what is happening. Also, we always ask the user what version of the software they are using because sometimes upgrading the software will help you to solve the issue, okay? To see the version of the software, click on the I information icon all right, that can be found here in the top um, of the screen, okay? And uh, there you can see the exact version. And if you click on the update button, that will lead you to the download page where you can see the latest version and download the latest if you are not uh, in that one, right? And test if your problem was solved because maybe we fixed that bug or there is something new that we added there. Right, so it is important you always uh, check if you're in the latest one because we keep uh, improving the software um, with patches almost every three or two weeks. Okay. Um, the second, the second point of my checklist: when in the lob, in the top left side of the modeling window, you see the word singularity, do not panic. The best is to go to the check tab to get more information about it. So. What is a singularity? This happens when the mesh was created, but the analysis cooled in the start due to one of the elements is maybe not connected well to the joint. There was a gap, uh, or maybe you have an overlapping of connect connecting items like bolts and welds in the same position, right? And I can, I can keep going with the situations that create a singularity. However, I won't go through all of them as the objective of this guide is to tell you where to find more information and how to fix it, okay? You need solutions. <laughs> so when you're in the check tab, 
see that the analysis tab has information about where the singularity is happening. So if I do a zoom here, um, here you can see that we are in the check tab, then uh, here um, you click over the analysis tab, then you can see the singularity um, information, and that is related to member M3. Also, if you activate the deform shape, right, and remember that to activate this deform shape, you need to activate either the equivalent stresses of or plastic strain, okay? You then can see that member like maybe flying out because it wasn't connected correctly, all right? But um, again, every time you get a singularity, go to the check tab, analysis tab, and see the non-conformity and activate the form shape. That can tell you something about it, all right? Um, so, I mean, in that case that I show you, some it's, it's very obvious, right? The, the, that member is not connected uh, well. If that is not that obvious, then you go back to the modeling tab, and this is my uh, checklist when reviewing a model. Um, so let's let's see that. So when I am oh, uh, when I am reviewing a model and I don't have many information on the singularity, I as I said, I go back to the modeling tab and I review all the members first. So I click always first to in the, into the bearing member. And I verified that the, the bearing member is at the node position. That means all the offsets, all the offsets are set to zero. Okay. In this case, uh, this is a good example because the bearing member is this column. We are seeing the top view of this connection, and the user move that member using offset E Y E C. All right. So uh, that can lead you. Um, a strange result just because this is out of the node. So at least the bearing member should be in the zero position, okay? So we don't have extra eccentricities that are not needed. So you can keep the bearing member at the zero position and then you can start moving everything around it. But the bearing member at least needs to be on the zero position. I also always check the geometrical type. Sometimes it is not the correct option to select either continuous or ended. So that's also something I, I go through it. Um, I review uh, always for all the members the offset EX. As mentioned in other webinars or uh, when I am speaking with users, using the offset EX means you're uh, moving the starting point of the member because you're moving the position along its axis. So when you do that, maybe that can lead you to an incorrect position of forces, or you are just simply creating a larger model. So I always recommend that you don't use the offset EX. Maybe if you use the EY or EC, that's fine because you're moving that laterally, but the offset EX is along its axis, all right? And the other two important, um, inputs to review is the model type and force position. I know that we always talk about this, but these are the most important boundary conditions in the modeling, all right? So when I am getting uh, a model, the first thing I review um, in the members is, is all these um, points here, right? Um, again, there are a lot of information about what is the model type and force position, but make sure you, you select the correct ones or review it and then Maybe that can that can help you to fix the uh, any singularity or any error in the model. Okay. Now, let's suppose that it wasn't a singularity, but you get a meshing error, okay, or operation error. And again, this will be mentioned in the top left side of the modeling window. Okay. If you get an error message, normally that mes message tell you what operation is creating the issue. So when you see something like the errors shown here in this screen, right, this is screenshots, um, you will notice that the analysis stops immediately as it wasn't possible to create the mesh, okay? 
that error will tell you exactly what operation or member is having the meshing error, okay? Like you can see here, um, the error was in one of the members, the error was in one of the gusset plates, um, or again, in the members, and it's tell you exactly what plate is having that meshing error, okay? Then if you are if you are in the in the design tab in the modeling tab, then you can go into the operations and um, you can right click over the operations line, okay, and then you can order the operations by member. So that will be easier to identify all the operations related to that member, okay, and then you can identify if you have any modeling error uh, that's creating this uh, meshing error, all right. So again, the information is the key, right? Because then you can go to that operation or to that member and fix it. All right, so related to that meshing errors, um, there are some common, common errors or um, modeling errors related to bolts. So let's discuss them here. Uh, so um, the first one that it's very, very common that we get is this message that's, that says bolts are too close to plate H or outside of the connected plate. And it tells you where is that. So in this case, it's member 249. And the manufacturing operation is grid number one, right? So this is telling you exactly where you find that or where to find that. Um, so when creating a grid, grid bolt operation, one of the main rules is to select the plates that the group of bolts will pass through, okay? In this case, this model uh, was created with two members. Here you can see member one, let's say, and member two. And behind these two plates or these two members, there is a, there, there was a plate, a continuous plate, all right? So the user create this grid operation number one, selecting SP1, that is the plate behind this, right? Then the item two was this plate, and the item three was this other plate, right? In this case, this is not correct. The correct way to do this is by creating one grid operation for this member plate and the behind plate, the SP1, and then another grid operation for this plate and the behind plate, okay? So in that case, you select two, only two plates, not three, okay? So it is important the correct selection of plates when creating a ball grid operation, okay? But again, this will tell you everything about it. I mean, this, this, this can help you a lot. Another issue that gives you a meshing error is that there not uh, there is no not enough edge distance. Again, the error will tell you which operation has the issue. Okay, so if you see here, you can see that it says bolts are too close to plate H, and that's on member CH manufacturing operation EP1. So that's the end plate. All right, and if you go to the transparent view, that can help you to see. Um, Look look at this H distance. So um, the mesh was, um, I mean, th there was not enough space to create the mesh elements over there. So that, that is why it's stopping the analysis immediately. Okay. Now let's talk about the gaps. The maximum allowable gap between plates is 1 16 of an inch. And um, when that gap is in plates connected by bolts, that will simply clear, create a singularity, okay? As you can see here, this is a good example because uh, when I was running this analysis, uh, I got the singularity and then I had to go back and review uh, the gaps. So this is not telling you like exactly where it's happening, but, um, you know, seeing the transparent view and rotating the model, I can see that there was a very obvious gap there, all right? So that was creating the, the singularity issue here. 
So one recommendation that we always give to our users is that you use the doubler option. So when you create, um, when you add an operation um, like a stiffening member, you can uh, set up that as a doubler of something, either from a plate, like in this case, or from a member, okay? Then, in this case, it's it's kind of tricky because maybe this stiffening member was created as a doubler of this plate, but then you can you need to move this laterally, okay? Also, uh, this is a double angle stiffening member, right? So then you can go to that cross, I mean, to that operation and reduce the distance between the two double angles. That is possible as well, all right? So, I mean, there are some so many different solutions, but uh, at the end of the day, is the 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 objective of this slide is to show you that the gaps will create a singularity issue, right? If you have a gap more than one sixteen of, of an inch, right? All right, now another bold, uh, bolts related issue is uh, when using slotted holes, make sure that the direction of the slotted hole is not in the same direction of the applied load, okay? So when you use bolts with the slotted holes, one of the direction is excluded and can move in the in that selected direction freely, okay? So beams in this case had no restriction in that horizontal direction, right? So let's see the editor of this operation in the next slide. When you go to that editor, uh, the, uh, I mean, when you go to the operation and then you go to the editor of that operation, that's where you can input the slotted holes, all right? So you can select if it's the horizontal direction or vertical direction in this table here. Then you can see, you can input the ratio of the slotted hole, even though this is a very short slotted hole, right? It is almost, uh, you can see that it's it's very small. It is almost the size of the regular hole, all right? That doesn't matter because what we are doing in the analysis is that we are releasing this direction, okay? So if you see the loads in this beam, it has a, an horizontal load, a compression force here, okay? And as we are releasing that direction of the analysis, right? That's why it couldn't finish or it couldn't start the, the analysis, right? Because this was free to move. One solution is to change these bolts to friction bolts, okay? In that case, then you're reviewing the friction between the plates and not the bearing bolts, okay? Um, so sometimes I have I have received this type of models where I am looking at all the operations, reviewing all my checklists, you know, reviewing everything, and everything looks okay. But then when I go to the editor, I can notice that there is uh, there are some slotted holes. This is just because the way we are modeling the slotted holes in the analysis right? We release that degree of freedom, okay? So that is that is uh, one common thing that we, we receive. All right, another typical issue that we found in the help desk is, the is when people or users are modifying the code setup, right? So let's talk about it. Within the within code setup that it's um, in the modeling tab, you can see this icon and then open the code setup. There are some options that can have an effect on the analysis. So one thing that I always tried is to reset the code setup properties to the default options, right? Um, an important aspect of the code setup is that the configuration 
is applicable for all the items in the file. All right. So if you modify something here in the code setup and then you, you, you jump to the next item in that same idea Statica file, you will get the same code setup settings that you modify for all the items in that file. All right. So people sometimes doesn't uh, consider that and um, they, they, they maybe modify something and that's, that's uh, been affecting the, the next uh, connection item, right? So when I, don't, when, I, when I am seeing some of the models and I don't find the issue, I always make sure the code setup is under the default settings, all right? All right, so let's, let's talk about one also uh, frequent case. Um, the analysis didn't get to the 100% of the applied forces. One item to check under the code setup is the stop at limit strength. If that option is active, like in this case, the analysis will stop whenever something is near the failure. Like in this case, the welds were at 99% utilization ratio, right? So the analysis is stopped. Um, and only 25% of the loads were applied, okay? So this helps you as in other, in other webinars uh, I have mentioned this, this helps you when you are in this design process. You don't have to run the full thing, all right? You, um, you use the stop at limit strain, then the analysis will stop with, when something is failing, then you can redesign that item, like in this case, the welds, maybe increasing the welds, increasing the size of the weld, and then you don't have to wait until it fails, right? Uh, but sometimes you don't realize that maybe in the next uh, connection item, you you activate this, and then you're running the analysis, and you say like, what what's happening here? <laughs> the analysis is being stopped at 25%, right? So uh, when you get this this issue that the analysis didn't get to the 100%, make sure you don't have this option active, right? So in this case, if I uncheck the stop at limit strain, the software will run to 100% and maybe that will re reveal the, the, the failure, the full thing, and you will see the full picture, right? Instead of stopping this at 25%. All right, so what, what if the stop at limit strain is not active and the analysis is still is a stop at a certain percentage, all right? So you check your code setup, the stop at limit strain is not active, and you get this result here, right? Like in this case, or in this case here, 92%, or here, 29%. Then you observe that your bearing member is a hollow section. And also, if you go to the check tab, you have a large deformation in your model. So in this case, the best guess is that it will be an instability issue, all right? So before explaining the approach to solve it, let's review the Idea Statica capabilities. So Idea Statica can run both material and geometrical nonlinear analysis. The material nonlinearity applies to the steel material, which means its behavior, described by the stress strain graph, is not linear. You can see the curve that we use uh, in Idea Statica in this first diagram. This is the one we always show in the theoretical background, right? Then, the geometrical nonlinear analysis applies to the nonlinear deformation of certain profile sections like hollow sections, which provides a more realistic deformation for those members. So when using a hollow section in Idea Statica as the bearing member, both types of nonlinearities are used in Idea Statica. So when the connection is overloaded, 
the hollow sections might lose stability, which results in a break of the analysis at the current percentage of the applied loads, right? So how to solve that? Let's review this slide. What to do? So here is a list uh, of steps to solve it, but for that, I'll, I'll show you a model. I have prepared this model. Let me bring that here to the screen, to the main screen here, all right? Then you run the analysis. You get um, till 60.3%, right? I checked that I don't have a stop at limit strain active. It's not active, so it, it was stopped. Then I realize I have an HSS section as the bearing member. And then I go to the uh, check tab. Here you can see what was applied. It was only applied 70% of uh, forces, right? And um, it doesn't look like a large deformation, but you can see how this beam is deformed, right? So the step the steps to to uh, solve this is going to go set up, turn off geometrical nonlinear analysis, right? Then because we are turning off the geometrical nonlinear analysis, that means the analysis will be uh, a bit more, more rigid in terms of the HSS analysis, right? So that's why it finished till 100%, okay? the HSS didn't lose stability. But this helps me to apply the full loads, I mean, all the loads in, in the analysis, right? And then you can turn on, again, equivalent stresses and see what is going on. Again, we have a small deformation here, right? But I don't want to keep this 100% and everything it's okay because I am not running geometrical nonlinear analysis and we are not capturing, you know, the real deformation of uh, this HSS. So I can see that, um, you know, the like the torsion of that beam is creating that loss of stability. Okay. So one approach here is to see that and then go back, for instance, in this case, uh, to the modeling tab and say, okay, to one, one approach can be to change the model type so you can restrain the lateral movement of this member, but sometimes you don't really know if that member really is going to be like fixed in the lateral movement, right? Like uh, if you select this one. We are not 100% sure. So I'll keep the NBYBCMY. Uh, I mean the full the full model type, the first one that allows this member to move in all the directions. But I'll test this with instead of just one plate here, I, I'll use uh, two plates. Okay, so that can give it give give to the beam a bit more stability on on that torsion. Okay, that it it was uh, happening in this analysis. So let's click over this plate. So you can see it was created as a doubler. So I'll select the location both. So we have two doublers here related to web one, right? Then I need to fix the grid operation because the grid operation only has two items, right? So remember, we need to select all the items that those, mem those uh, bolts will be connecting. And also, you can see this weird modeling here that is like passing through. I mean, once you start getting more experience, you, you see something weird in that modeling. But anyway, when you click over the grid operation, see that the, the plates are highlighted, right? So let's change this to three plates. Now you can see the full bolt here. That's what I was referring to, right? And um, this is SP2A, that's B web one, and then this is SP2B, all right? Now, if we look at this here, 
Let me turn off the member's name. Um, here we have the wells, this well here. It was two side well because um, there was only one plate, right? However, I can change this to just one well here. I'll change it to the other side. And in this case, uh, the user was using wealth, but I always recommend to use cutoff blade operation. So I'll use the cutoff blade operation instead of the wealth operation. So that will create a cut exactly by the other plate. So first, let's cut SP2A by this plate that's called SP1, right? And we review the wealth, is there? And then we can copy this operation and select this uh, other plate that is SP2B. Remember, the name of the plate is in the lower left side of the screen. So there you can see all the details about that plate. Then SP2B. Oh, sorry. It's SP2B, SP2B by SP1. Now it's the weld is there. We change the side, and there you go right? Now we have the welds. Now let's run the analysis here. All right, so we decrease the, the utilization ratio on those plates. Then let's review the check tab here, colon stresses, and you can see that now the beam is not moving. <laughs> All right, but remember, we are still with that option, turn it off, the GMNA, it's turn it off. The objective of this is having GMNA active and running the full analysis under GMNA because that will capture the real deformation of the hollow section, all right? So let's click back to into code setup and see if with GMNA now everything is okay. So we calculate this. All right. And now we can see that the analysis finished to 100%. So um, the issue was with that like high torsion of the of the beam, and that one was creating that. Um, stability loose uh, well we we lose a little bit of stability on the on the hss and then it was a stop now we put more uh, stiffness on this connection by putting two plates here and now it finished if we look at the the form shape i mean we we still have some hot spots here but everything it's it's okay right now it's running but we can uh, assess this connection okay with GMNA active. Another uh, thing that we have for HSS is that you can review the local deformation, okay? That will tell you the deformation versus the limit of deformation for HSS members, and that will tell you the percentage. The recommended value, or I mean the maximum local deformation for HSS is 3%, okay? So we got 0.3%. Uh, 25 so it's we are under the limits you can see that um, here we are missing the deformation on that uh, HSS right but I have seen that it is just because we are using the fraction format so if you go back to the units by clicking there then you click over the um, decimal option here for this uh, thicknesses cross section and structure, you apply that, and then we go back to. Okay, then the the units are applied. If you go back and see the local deformation, then you can see the values here. Okay, so this is the deformation, the maximal local cross section deformation. This is the limit, the low deformation, and this is the percentage, right? So not that bad. All right, so let's go back to the presentation here. All right, so let's uh, reiterate on this. 
So when you have this analysis, not to 100%, you have an HSS member and you have a large deformation, right? The, the solution or yeah, the, the way to the approach to fix this is to turn off the YMNA from code setup, run the analysis, you can spot the issue, then you can fix the design and run the analysis again. You verify that everything is okay and rerun the analysis now with YMNA active and ensure the design is okay under YMNA because it is important that we capture the real behavior of HSS members. All right. Now let's go to the next one. Now let's talk about non-conformity. Sometimes analysis and design is okay, but then you go to the analysis tab in, under the check tab and you get non-conformities uh, table. So let's, let's review, review them. The non-conformity uh, conformity table shows the reactions on the model that weren't considered due to the model type selection of certain members. It can also be created by uh, the lateral restraint operations that you add to some members because you are restraining some movements, rotations, right? Then the software is trying to tell you some of the uh, reactions or let's say rotations that the analysis didn't capture just because you restrained those degrees of freedom on the members, all right? So let's review this example that I have here on the screen. So everything it's okay here, analysis 100%, all the design items are okay. But then you go to the analysis tab and then you see this non-conformity table, right? Here you're seeing R, R X, R Y, R C. Those are rotation uh, reactions, right? Because then you can see here the units. R Y is one, one, uh, 10, 110 keeps fit. So this can, uh, this high reaction is, important to consider because it is it's it, it's considerable high uh almost the same as the applied force or almost more than the applied force the applied force was one uh sorry uh 80 kips as a shear force what i see on this model is that the model type for both members the beam and the bearing member was mbybc that means we are treating them as a truss element. They cannot rotate, right? They cannot handle rotations. So we are fixing those degree of freedoms, right? Uh, you can see the sign of the that model type for the beam, right? And we are getting this high rotation in the non-conformity table. Then if I go back to the modeling tab, I change the model type for the bearing member to be the full capacity, like the, the first model type option, right? That means that member can handle everything, all the movements, all the rotations, everything. And then the model type for this member is um, NBCMY. Remember that the model type is telling the software what forces can handle. And the other ones that are not shown in the option, that means they are restrained, right? So in this case, you can see this sign here. So lateral, this, mo this member cannot move. But it's okay enough because we just have a, shear, a vertical shear force here, right? So it doesn't matter. Now, again, everything it's okay here. Then if we look at the non-conformity um, results or table, we can see that we get rid of that high RY, um, RY reaction, all right? So this, I mean, you still have some non-conformity reactions, right? But they are small compared to the applied forces. So if you have this, still you have this non-conformity reactions there, 
uh, that means that probably you have a lateral restraint operation that's that's um, that's restraining the rotations or something like that, right? Like in this case, this beam has that lateral restraint operation on the top flange. So maybe that's that's okay. It 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 doesn't uh, you know turn on a red flag here. It's it's fine enough. And then you can also see that the the stresses were decreased, right? Just because you are putting a more realistic model type, all right? So, summary. When you get a high non-conformity, it's, it's important that you uh, review the model type of your members, all right? Okay, so, Sometimes we we get uh, models like asking why they have a detailing error, right? So let's review that. Um, you know that in Idea Statica for AISE and for other codes, we can run detailing checks, right? Those can be active or you can active them in the code under code setup, right? So that is the option that you it active and then you run the analysis you run the analysis and then you get 100 percent but here you can see that there is an error for the bolts okay so we always get this question like why am i getting a detailing error for the bolts to review where are those uh, errors uh, the best is to go to the check tab then you go to the bolts uh, tab here right uh, then you can see the list of all the bolts sir and the results sir okay but also you will see a column of the detailing checks in this case everything was incorrect i mean you have a, a in this case the, the the model has a detailing uh warnings okay to see them to see more details on those uh click always on the plus icon to review the calculations okay and then if you scroll down till the end of that calculation report, you will see what is the issue, okay? So B1 is too close to build B2, and it tells you what is the required uh, spacing, okay? Those um, detailing checks for the bolts um, are based on AISE, okay? Uh, you can see the this table for the minimum edge distance and the minimum spacing, okay? So we base all those detailing checks using this. For the welds, we do a similar thing. If you go to the welds tab, then click over the plus icon, scroll down, you will see what it's happening here. And we base this on the minimum size of fill welds table G24. All right. We iterate on this every time we speak about modeling in Idea Statica, but it is really important. So the order of operations matter. So it can also affect the analysis when you're modeling. So sometimes it doesn't matter because you run the analysis at the finish, everything it's okay, the formation is okay. But some other times I have seen models that the uh, that because they put um, cut later or after, it's it's affecting the analysis. So make sure when you're modeling to model that connections uh, connection as you were constructing that in real life, right? So this is just like a reminder, order of operations matter in Idea Statica. All right, let's talk about the last uh, item here on my checklist. When having a round HSS cross section and then you have a meshing error, all right, here are uh, some options to use. So because of the way we break out the HSS round section, okay, the round HSS cross section, all right, um, we, we, do, we like uh, break out that member like in um, 
linear strips, as you can see here, right? Um, then when you have a vertical or perpendicular plate welded to that HSS, maybe the edge of that plate and the edge of the shell element for the welds is not matching with one of the flats of the or one of the strips here of the HSS. So this is this this screenshot that you are seeing here is the um, shell uh, view of of this model, right? So because it didn't match match with the edges here, it is not create it is not running the analysis because there is anything connected there, right? One solution to that, when welding vertically to an HSS round, um, you can go to the code setup, scroll down to the model and mesh, and change this division of surfaces uh, of the circular round hollow sections. I have, I have fixed this, like reducing to 60 maybe, or, uh, 62, and that that makes um, the vertical plate to uh, match with one of the one of the strips of that HSS. So sometimes it works, right? So you can you can uh, test that solution if you get some issues with that, or one one other solution that we have for you is to use the polygon hollow section on their call form database, okay? So this is another way of modeling hollow sections, right? And then the type of section we use there, instead of uh, breaking out that member in small strips, we break out that member in different like faces here, as you can see, flat, flat surfaces, all right? You can tell how many vertices, so you can increase or decrease the plates on that HSS, right? But that makes you or help you to match maybe the vertical plate to that face of the member, or maybe if you want to work with one of the plates in that HSS, like bolting something or whatever, maybe you want to use that plate, uh, put that doubler, put a reinforcement on that HSS, the best is to use this cross section so you can work on this plates here, right? It is also uh, helpful to rotate the model to match, you know, the flats on the plates you want to connect them, all right? So um, that is the solution that we recommend normally when you have a round hole section and you want to work on, the, on those plates. Finally, finally, if you follow all this checklist that I have for you that we created for you and you still doesn't find the solution for your model, remember that the best way to get in touch with the help desk with the idea static tech support engineers is through the user portal, all right? There you can go to the portal. This is the website, all right? And you can create a user case. That uh, portal or that user case will go to your regional queue, okay? And then from there, we can help you to, to see what is happening. But the before mentioned checklist will can help you to uh, solve those common issues, all right? All right, let's see if there is there is uh, some questions that we can answer um, now. Jan, yes. if you can help me with them. Yeah, of course, just a few questions actually. If people have more questions, just feel free to uh, <laughs> include them right now in the, the questions panel. Um, there is a few questions, but most of them are actually very specific towards oh, modeling, okay. so we'll probably uh, uh, respond to those uh, separately by email after the, the meeting. Uh, but there was one question that uh, I think we can talk about because I, I think it's fairly common for people to design splice connections and um, that sometimes requires shim plates to be added between um, a shear plate and a uh, a beam web, for example. Um, so the question was, was this possible? Uh, can ID Aesthetica handle it? And the, the answer is yes. Uh, and the stiffener plate, sorry, stiffening plate operation is the best way to model these uh, filler plate or, or shim plates uh, 
uh, to, to, to have those in ideas that you got. Yeah, the, the doubler option is will be your best friend exactly. for the shim plates. <laughs> and then adding exactly. a, a grid operation independently. So you can include all the plates there. Yeah. Um, can you explain the joint in equilibrium setting and how that affects connection design? I think that's a great question. Yeah, and that's that's also a common question. So loads in equilibrium allows you to input the forces in the bearing member as well, right? Like in this case, you can see that the loads in equilibrium is off, so it's not selected there. So then you're just adding the forces on the beam element. If you have the results from your global analysis software, maybe you activate this, and now you can add the internal forces on the bearing member. So this table down here um, will tell you if you are if you are if you have some unbalanced forces because something is happening in this bearing member, right? So we are telling you if this node is in equilibrium, all right? So that's that's basically loads in equilibrium. That's how how it can help you to input the real forces on this node, okay? Excellent. Um, there's a question. I'll let you actually uh, figure out whether we want to give a lot of information or not. Uh, uh -huh. Is there any future updates for anchor bolt supplementary reinforcements? Um, so there are updates. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. We have to be honest. There is something that will uh, come up soon. Uh, we actually released today. Maybe Andrea, you'll talk a bit more about this. We've released yep. this morning uh, Idea Static version 24. And uh, there will be a uh, what we call detail 3D uh, version available there. Uh, it's a, in a beta version at, at this time and not for ACI code. Uh, but that will be actually our application to allow for um, footing reinforcement. And that will be linked to the connection application. Uh, it's still in early stages, but uh, yes, there will be updates. And uh, yes, it will be able to handle pretty much any connection. So that will be coming first for the euro codes and then for uh, ACI codes, uh, hopefully in the next uh, month or year. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to add anything to this, Andrea. Um, yeah, well, uh, I, I, we have a slide after the Q&A, <laughs> but just for your information, we I am just using 23, not yet the 24, but we it's coming. I mean, we, we released it today, all right? Yeah, version 24 was released about two hours ago only. Yeah. Uh, and an email will be sent out, I believe, tomorrow to to allow for everyone to um, uh, download this. Um, with order of operations being important, is there any way to reorder the existing operations, or do you have to duplicate, then delete the original operations to re to reorder? Yeah, that is that is the approach. Um, we there is no way like to drag this operations yet. We are working on that. That's something it's coming soon. But for now, the the way to do that is just copying that operation, uncheck it, and maybe delete it, and then you you will have it that later here at the end. All right. That's that's the way. There's a question about the um, top flange restraint operation. Uh -huh. Can this be used to stabilize a shear plate uh, connection to an HSS? that had the torsion issue yeah 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 definitely uh but uh, as, as we always mention make sure you you'll have that restraint in real design mm -hmm. the real design right uh it usually doesn't with matter. a concrete slab or yeah or exactly with a deck. yeah if that if that will have a deck maybe but you need to make sure not just because you will fix the issue here right but in the real in the real design, so you can add that using this operation here. That's lateral restraint, and then you can select what plate to put that. If it's a rigid torsional restraint and rigid lateral restraint, all right. Uh, next question is actually two parts. The the first part is um, sometimes when I'm looking at an as built condition, bolts wind up closer to plate edges than AAC recommends. Is there a way to turn off this warning and still run the model? 
Yeah, so to turn off the detailing checks, you can go to code setup and then you uncheck it here. Exactly. All right. And um, second part of this question is, is there an easy way to measure what the current, current edge distance is? in let's say that shear plate, for example. Um, one, I mean, you can go here and see the grid operation uh, from here, and then the grid operation will tell you this uh, distances. But if that is not, not enough, you can go always to that uh, plate, go to the editor, and then go to drawing here, uh, and then you can see the distances. Yeah. And um, this will also pop up in the reports if you turn on the bill of uh, material. So exactly. these, this drawing will uh, appear in your report. Um, can you tell more about the stop at limit strain function? Yeah, so the stop at limit strain will stop, like the name says, stop the analysis whenever something, one item is failing. Like if the bolts are like near the failure, like almost 100% utilization ratio or the welds or some of the plates, right? So that helps you to uh, save some time when you are uh, in the analysis, uh, sorry, design process, right? So you don't have to wait till all the loads finish. So you see that you have an issue with the bolts, you change it, and then you rerun the analysis and do your design iterations. Okay, so that is why we have that. However, sometimes you don't realize you activate that and you're just looking around all the operations. You're like uh, saying like, what's happening with this model? It's just stopping and, uh, and, and then you realize you have that option, all right? So make sure you, you, you are aware when you select that. Um, so with that, we'll, we'll wrap it up for today. We're getting close to time here. So thanks, Andrea and Jan, for all the info. Um, and thanks for everybody for attending. We'll just uh, catch you at next month's webinar. And uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.